Hello everyone, Maggie Higgins here from the St. John Art Center. I'm an artist and an educator and every week I bring you a fun new art activity that you can do while you're staying safe at home. This week we're gonna learn the art of flower pounding. It's traditional in a few cultures, one of which is the Cherokee culture, and another is the Japanese culture in which it's called hapazomi. So if you're ready to get outside, collect some plant life, and make some beautiful printed fabric, let's go. First, I'm gonna tell you about some of the supplies we'll need today, and we only need a few of them. The first one and most important is some flowers. Need some flowers and some nice green leaves. Um, you can go outside and find these, or you can go to the store and find some. Uh, if you go outside and you're looking for leaves, look for um, really nice juicy leaves of different shapes. Look for wild flowers so that you have lots of options of color and size and shape. Next, you'll need some fabric. So I have this really nice light colored fabric. It's kind of sheer or see-through, uh, which is a nice touch, but you can use any light colored fabric. Um, cotton works really well, linen works nicely, and silk is great too. So especially if you have any handkerchiefs or scarves around, try it out and see what you can create. A hammer, a metal hammer, heavy, you can use a ball peen hammer, any hammer you have really will work. You just need something to transfer the leaves and the flowers onto your fabric. A big heavy book is a really good idea. It's what we're gonna be hammering on. Um, you want a smooth surface that will absorb some of the, the shock from the hammering. Um, so you want a smooth, hard surface to do your hammering on. So this could be a piece of wood, or you could go outside and do it on the sidewalk as long as you lay down a towel or something a little bit softer in me so it doesn't rip the fabric. First, I'm going to lay down my fabric on a piece of paper. I actually cut these petals off of our carnation because I love the color of them and I wanted to make a pattern with them, but the carnation was too thick. So I lay them under the fabric and then I fold the fabric over and half. This way when I hammer the petal, the color from the petal will transfer uh, symmetrically on both sides of the fabric. So I just fold it in half and as you can see the color is already coming through and I just peel the petal off and now I have a beautiful imprint of that petal. I've decided I'm going to do this repeatedly and kind of make a flower pattern with these petals. I'm gonna lay the next one beside and just repeat. So what I'm doing here and what's really nice about the sheer fabric is that I can see all of the color from the petal coming through and I know that I've pounded every last millimeter of the petal and I'm getting all of the color in there. But sometimes what will happen is it looks great on the top layer but maybe it isn't as vivid on the bottom layer. So that's why I'm peeling up and double checking And another good trick that uh, you'll see me do a little later on is I actually flip the fabric so that I can a little bit easier get it symmetrical on both sides. I'm gonna flip my piece of paper just so the residual petal color doesn't transfer onto the fabric. So you may wanna do this, you may wanna have a few sheets of paper just to change out, just so it doesn't have transfer where you don't want it. I'm gonna place my next petal again in that pattern to make a complete flower and just repeat the pounding again. Now, what I'm doing here, be very careful that you don't hit your hand in any way. And as you can see, I'm not pounding very hard. I'm just kind of tapping, tapping, tapping. And you really kind of want to, in some of the more difficult places, kind of focus on the um, edge of the hammer. So as you can see, I'm checking, and here is the trick where I'm flipping the fabric over, and I'm pounding on the reverse side to really make sure that all of the color gets transferred evenly. Now you don't always have to fold the fabric over. If you'd like, you can just ham hammer onto a piece of the fabric and put a piece of paper uh, between the hammer and the petal as well. That way you don't get all of the juice on the, the hammer. And you don't have to make it symmetrical like I'm doing. You don't have to do the folding, but I think it creates a really nice effect. And now I'm going to do a leaf, which I think will be a really nice contrast. So we have the kind of very vivid uh, magenta of the petals, and now I'm going to do this really beautiful green of the leaf. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm folding it over in half. I'm trying to line up uh, so that it's almost perfectly symmetrical. And leaves can be really quite wet. They have a whole. They carry a lot of water in them. 
So you may notice there's a bit uh, more color comes through immediately and there is sometimes some bleeding on the outside of the leaf as well. So you may not get a very sharp image, but um, it's again experimenting. So try different leaves. They all are different. They have different water content and different uh, chlorophyll content. So your color will be different every time. And I did that technique again where I flipped it to make sure it was quite even on both sides. And I peeled that off and yes, I very much like that um, touch of green. I'm going to do a secondary leaf as well. I think I'll just add another piece of visual interest and create some nice balance with the flower petals beside it. And now just for the very center, I'm going to do a singular uh, petal in the middle. I'm going to lay that down. I'm not going to fold this time because I only want one of these petals to be there. And so for this one, I have to hold it. Be very careful not to get your fingers. Once you've done a few taps, um, the petal will almost adhere itself to the fabric. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about it moving around after that. And there we go. I really love how this turned out. Um, this is a fairly new technique to me, so I'm still experimenting, but I really quite like the look of this on the sheer fabric. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun making your beautiful uh, scarf or fabric. Maybe it's a shirt you made, maybe it's a pillowcase. I want you to show me what you made. You can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash St. John Art Center, or you can go to our website, sjartcenter.ca, and we have the lesson plan on there as well. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to donate and support your local art center, you can visit our website, sjartcenter.ca slash donate. I'll see you next week. Bye.